Sure, I've done my fair share of killing in the wasteland, but every unnecessary loss hurts not only me, it hurts every loved one of the one lost. Absent Moon, a.k.a. Night Stalker. The days I've spent over the past few years fighting for my country took a toll on me. The days since my homeland died and the fires of magical radiation has taken an even bigger toll. In the past 40 years since I helped start this government that's been dubbed the Grand Pegasus Enclave, I've learned that time to see the error of my ways. I've watched every single pony and griffin die, or go through more in their lives than any pony should have to deal with. My own family was no exception to that. With the death of my oldest son at the hooves of his two younger brothers, I've lost any respect I've had for the Enclave. Thunder Lane is taking everything from me. He's taken my two younger sons, brainwashed them into following his rule, and used them to silence my oldest for good. If it wasn't for Nightingale, my youngest and only filly, and Lightning Dust, I would have thrown to Thunder Lane's fortress and annihilated him and his entire family. Though my body probably wouldn't have been able to make it through the fight. If I still had the power armor Manette made for me, then I might still stand a chance. But that was still locked up in the Lucky Horseshoe. My wife and my daughter are the ones who convinced me that I had to leave. They're the ones who told me that I'd need to do if I wanted to fix everything I destroyed over the past fifty years. Ever since that day I formed the Children of the Night. Ever since that day I took my new name, Night Stalker. Greta was right. I was a fool for letting my pride take control of me for so long. I let my mind be manipulated by darkness. And because of that, if I don't set things right, the wasteland below and the enclave above would be utterly destroyed by that darkness. If my plans work, I'll be able to set in motion the events that should fix everything and save my family. The question is, will my body last long enough to do what I needed to do? I opened my eyes and groaned in pain as I felt the scabs of my flanks where my cutie mark used to be crack and bleed. Right now, my body wasn't even able to get off this cot. Greta's doctor put me on when she saved me from that fall. My wings hurt too, but not as bad. I still can't believe my two younger sons attacked me like that, broke my wings, burned away my cutie mark, and branded me as a dashite. A program I foolishly started when Scootaloo had that fight with me so many years ago. I could still remember her screams of pain when I made her the first dashite. Branding on the mark of her mentor and my former friend as a so-called punishment for her defying me. She just wanted to have us use the power we had to help the ponies in the wasteland, and I'd called her foolish for wanting to help the dirt ponies. If Greta hadn't just left the Enclave, if she hadn't left me, just a few days before, maybe I would have been in a better mindset to hear Scootaloo out. I needed to stop feeling sorry for myself. I did my best to ignore the pain in my body as I got to my hooves, stumbling a little. I tried to take a step towards the mouth of the cave, but stumbled and nearly fell over, before a figure rushed in and caught me. The talons holding me tight, then forced me to lay back down on the cot, as I heard my old friend's voice say, Damn it, Mooney, you trying to kill yourself? You're not a young buck anymore, you know. I looked up into Greta's face and couldn't help the small smile that pulled at my lips. <laughs> when have you ever known me to just lay around when there's work to be done? She rolled her eyes at me and sighed. 
You used to be a lot younger, and with that a lot less injuries back then. You're lucky I heard about the overthrow of your government when I did and was able to save your worthless ass. Ha, <laughs> I'm still surprised you did. I thought you would have let me fall to my death. The last time I saw you, it seemed like you'd rather see me dead. What changed? I asked as I looked up at her. Laps in judgment. Anyway, what happened up in the clouds that would make your near worshippers kick you out like that and brand you? She asked, stepping away. As she did, I noticed that she looked a lot different than she had when we'd as she stormed out of my office all those years ago. The feathers over her chest and head were mostly gray. The same for some of her fur. She had scars covering a good amount of her body, and she looked like life hadn't been easy for her. I did notice, however, that she still had joy and misery strapped to sheaths in her chest. <laughs> I see you still have the swords that I gave you, I said with a light chuckle. I see you're still good at changing the subject, she said, pinching the bridge of her beak. You might have given them to me. But joy and misery were both made by Manette. She was a close friend. And I miss her quite a lot. Same for the rest of the children. Could have fooled me. Last I heard, you've been hunting them down, I said. She sighed and sat down next to me. She looked like it wasn't easy for her either. Age was claiming both of us, it seemed. I was angry back then, and yes, I was trying to kill anyone who knew about Falling Shadows. I managed to kill Babs at that dance studio she ran. She looked sad as she continued. Didn't know her son was in the room when I'd done it. I tried finding the others, and didn't have much luck. Now I really wish I would have thought things through more. Yeah, I got intel about her dying by your talons, too. What happened to her son? Was he still alive? I asked. He's alive. I left after killed her. I thought she knew more about what happened with Falling Shadows because she was great at keeping secrets. Her son wasn't my target, and I don't kill kids, she replied. We all were. I said. Me more than any other, I think. A small smile came to Greta's beak as she said, Your entire life was a big secret, Mooney. Night Stalker. Sorry, I sometimes forget that you don't like your old nickname. I think using Night Stalker would be a bad idea now that I'm a Dashite. Unless some pony saw you catch me, I'm guessing that Thunderlane and my sons think I'm dead. I'll need to find a way to let Nightingale and Lightning know I'm alive, and still carry out my plans. I said as I tried to steady myself again. Plans? Greta asked, looking confused and a little scared. I couldn't help but smirk as I said. I learned some stuff about that falling shadows really is. I don't know how, but Minette found a way to get a message to me. It had all of her research into the project on it, and intel I wasn't told about when we were working on it. How will Falling Shadows be of any use to any pony with Luna dead and the Mark II's lost? Greta asked. The system was never meant to be just used on Luna. That was what Project Stargazer was for and failed. Manette used the plans and ideas from that project to help our zombie friend uh, make Falling Shadows. If some pony finds Aquila in that old lab and she takes over their body, she can become the most powerful magic user in all of Equestria. And after so many years trapped down there, I'm sure she wouldn't be friendly towards our kind. At the same time, Manette speculated that the power that would be unlocked when Falling Shadows was activated would most likely open the deepest levels of Tartarus. I said as I winced as my wings flared up with pain. Wait, back up a bit. 
How did she tell you any of this? She's dead, Greta said. I thought so too, and maybe she is. But the intel was sent to an old terminal I still had. The intel was sent two weeks ago. Some pony sent it to me, and Manette was the only one who knew the broadcast ID for that terminal. She might still be alive out there. If she is, though, I don't know where she is, I said. What do you plan on doing, then? Gret asked. Pain ran through my chest, making me nearly cry out, but I managed to hold it back. I couldn't tell her. Not yet. If she knew, she'd never let me do what I needed to do. Greta might have been angry with me for many years, but from what I could tell, she still cared about me, and those kinds of feelings would only make what I had to do harder. I managed to smile again as I said, I can't go over everything yet. I'll need to heal first and make sure the ponies I need to talk to are still alive. Once I'm healed, I'll be out of your feathers. She cocked an eyebrow at me. You're gonna leave again? If I remember right, you did the leaving last time, I joked. But, seeing how you're talking to me now, I'm guessing you found out what really happened at Griffinstone. She nodded slowly. Two years ago, my Griffins and I took a group of your enclave near the ruins of Las Pegasus. One of them was on Thunder Lane's team that day. After some time, I questioned him and learned the truth. You had nothing to do with the deaths of our homeland. I never had any proof, but I had a feeling he had something to do with it. I think he's been working against us for some time. Maybe even before the bombs fell. I didn't have time to learn more before I was branded. But, if it helps, I'm just as angry as you are for the loss of our old homeland and the friends we had there, I said sadly. I tried to go back a few years ago, but the place was too deadly. Although, I was able to visit our old hangout. I wasn't able to watch the sun set like in the old days, but it was still the first time in years I thought about you and back when we were kids still, she said, sitting down and looking sad. Aurora's Twin Peaks. You know, the last time we both went there, we was both the happiest and saddest day of my life, I said, feeling my heart raise a little as I remembered the words I wanted to say to her so badly, but was too scared to utter. She smiled. We were both about eighteen, I think, back then. I wanted to tell you a secret that day. But we both ended up just watching the sunset. It was the day before you joined the military. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something too. But I whipped out. I said with a laugh. She shared the laugh. Well... What I wanted to say to you, Mooney, was probably more embarrassing and taboo than what you had to say, I'm sure. Oh, really? And what was that? I teased. Ha! <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you now. I'm an old griffin and leader of the growing Talon Company. I'm not a teenager anymore, she said. I leaned against the wall and looked up at the face I grew up with. What would she have said if I told her how much I'd loved her over the years? How scared I was to let any pony find out that I loved a griffin? True, I fell for lightning dust later, and I still loved her. But she never made my heart beg for her like Greta did. Maybe it was the fact that we'd grew up together. Or maybe I was just attracted to griffins, being as I grew up around them. Either way, even now, with what was happening to me, I still couldn't tell her. I couldn't tell her that she was the only creature I've ever wanted in my life, and how I wanted to make the life bond with her back then when we were still young and before I was Night Stalker. Greta, I said. Yeah, she responded. From now on, call me Absent, or Absent Moon. 
Mooney is not well known, but some know you used to call me that. Night Stalker is dead, and needs to stay that way, I said. Understood, boss, she teased. I smiled again. If we get the chance, let's go to Aurora's Twin Peaks again. I'll find a way to watch the sunset with you. Cross my heart. <laughs>